Hello and welcome to another video review. This is Warso for PC, Mac, and Linux. This is a freeware first-person shooter by the Warso team and Chasseur de Bots that was originally released in 2005 as an alpha version and it finally saw a full release in 2012. And what you're seeing here is the 2.1 version that was released earlier this year. And it's interesting primarily because it runs on a modified version of the Quake 2 engine known as Q-Fusion and it also is a cel-shaded game which we really don't have all that many of. But other than that, what you have here is an arena shooter in the general style of Quake 3 with some rather slight tweaks here and there, mostly to the movement system. And that of course brings up the question of how this does compare to Quake 3 because that's primarily what it's basing its gameplay style off of. And more importantly, how does it fare in the modern era where we actually have more modern arena shooters available? Some of which, like this, are even available for free. Let's go ahead and delve into this thing and find out. Well, as far as presentation goes, I did mention that this runs on the Q-Fusion engine, which is basically just a modified Quake 2 engine, and it looks pretty similar to Quake 3, it's just that it's cel-shaded. This means that you've got a lot of rather blocky modeling and clumsy animation, but at the same time, you have some very nice cartoony graphics that actually help to bring things up a bit, considering that the actual visual quality really isn't all that great. Don't get me wrong, this thing runs butter smooth for the most part, and that's primarily due to how the graphics are designed. It was an intentional design choice to make the graphics not really cutting edge or anything like that, because they wanted to focus on performance, and they also had the Quake 2 engine available. And in that context, it's definitely a success. It's just not particularly appealing to the eye, except for the fact that it's a cell shaded game. Then of course you move over into sound design, and that's where they could have bumped up the presentation considerably by having some rather nice hard hitting sound effects and such like that. Instead they have some incredibly wimpy sound effects. Nothing in this game sounds remotely powerful and it's actually kind of annoying. And it's mostly annoying in the fact that none of the weapons actually sound satisfying to use. In fact most of them really aren't all that satisfying to use, but that's something I'll get to more when I get to the gameplay. And if it were just the weapon sounds and the rest of the sound design was actually rather solid then it would be okay, but then there's the voice acting, which is just terrible. There's no other way to describe it. It is just terrible, incredibly amateurish, and cheesy in the not amusing way. In fact, even the jumping sounds where you grunt every single time you jump are actually incredibly annoying, which means that when I was bunny hopping around like you're supposed to be doing in a Quake 3 style game, I was practically begging for earplugs. It's actually that annoying. At least in Quake, it's just goofy, so you can kind of put up with it, but in this, it just gets annoying just because of how incredibly amateurish it is. It's like they put literally no effort into it whatsoever instead of putting effort into it and failing. And then of course there's the music, which is some pretty simplistic electronic stuff that really isn't pleasant to listen to at all and really doesn't do much to get you pumped to play the game. So while you can put up with the visuals because they're going for performance over actual visual quality and they're running on a rather old engine at this point and it's cell shaded, there's really not much excuse you can make for the sound design other than, hey, it's a small indie dev team that's putting this game out as freeware. And quite frankly, that's not much of an excuse because I've seen other freeware games that have better sound than this and that's kind of telling. But of course what really matters here is the gameplay, because there is no story in this thing. This is a straight up arena shooter. It is designed purely around multiplayer and nothing more than that. And to that end, all of the modes in this game are available in other arena shooters. You've got your basic deathmatch and team deathmatch of course, you've got your capture the flag, you have a sort of search and destroy style mode where one team has to get to a planting position and then the other team is trying to defend those planting positions. You have headhunt mode which is basically just deathmatch only one of the players is marked as the target and everyone else is trying to take them down in order to become the target because the target themselves actually generates points while staying alive. And then of course in the true Quake tradition you have a duel mode where it's just a one on one arena battle and in a slight departure you have the race mode where you are competing against the other players in order to complete the course the fastest. And that's pretty much it save for a couple of variants of those, for example CTF Tactics 
which is basically just capture the flag, only you're playing as different classes instead of just being a typical arena shooter. Here's the thing. Absolutely none of these modes are actually original to Warsaw. It's just stuff that other games have done, and frankly, done better than this. Of course, that brings up something that is rather problematic about Warsaw in really all of its aspects, not just the game modes. It goes for a minimalist approach, which means that you're not really going to find all that much unique about this game. All the uniqueness comes in the very, very slight tweaks that it makes to the typical Quake 3 formula, which is to say that they have a more advanced movement system which includes things like jumping off of walls to some degree as well as running up walls to some degree. It's a bit janky at times and I've never really managed to get it working all that well, but it is something you can do and I can see where people who've played this for a long time would be able to get pretty good at it, but I quite frankly can't afford to invest the amount of time and effort it would take to be able to master the movement system in this, particularly considering that the game's pretty much dead. The absolute most number of people I saw playing this thing online was about eight. And all of them were playing it in rather high ping servers, which is why you don't see me going up against other players in this gameplay footage, but rather going up against the bots. This exposed something that is rather problematic. The bots are incredibly stupid. They are capable of doing one thing and one thing only, and that's getting kills. Anything else, and I do mean anything else, and they are basically useless. The defusal mode is a complete joke if you play against bots because they have absolutely no idea how to actually complete the objective so they just end up jumping around and trying to do team deathmatch in it. Basically like you'd expect your average Call of Duty player to do because they have absolutely no concept of what an objective is other than shoot the enemy. Generally the same thing happens when you're trying to play capture the flag as well except they occasionally will actually try to capture flags. They're just terrible at it. So effectively, playing against bots really does limit you to the deathmatch mode, so either just normal deathmatch, team deathmatch, headhunter, or duel mode. And that really does limit the lasting appeal of the game. Because once you get past the changes to the movement system, what you've ultimately got is just some rather slight tweaks on Quake 3's arsenal. The most noticeable tweak being that the damage you do is overall reduced. By a rather noticeable margin, I might add, none of the weapons feel remotely satisfying to use simply because they actually aren't very powerful. For example, the rocket launcher's splash damage radius is actually noticeably smaller than it is in Quake 3, and its even impact damage is noticeably smaller as well, let alone the splash damage. But really, that's true of all of the weapons in this game. They all take more hits to bring down your opponent than they do in Quake 3, which means that everyone feels pretty much like a bullet sponge. And while I'm not really sure why they decided to go that route, what I am sure about is its effect on the game, which is purely detrimental. One of Quake's biggest strengths is just how incredibly satisfying all of the weapons are to use. Every single weapon has its place in Quake 3. In Warsaw, you're really only going to use a handful of the weapons simply because all of the other ones are utterly pathetic, or you just don't have anything better at the time. I'm serious, the only reason you would use the plasma gun in Warsaw over the rocket launcher is because you have no rockets or you don't have the rocket launcher itself. The grenade launcher has plenty of uses in Quake 3, mostly as an area denial weapon. In Warsaw, it has basically no use whatsoever. It's things like that that shed light on why exactly so few people are playing this game anymore. While the movement is definitely very skill-based and suitably fast for an arena shooter, the gunplay is just incredibly lacking. And when you combine that with the rather basic game modes and the incredibly bad AI, you end up with a recipe for disaster on the single player side of things, which of course means that you have to turn to the multiplayer to bring things up, and on that front you run into the problem that the game is pretty much dead, there's almost no one playing this thing. And even back when it was at its height, it never really managed to get a particularly big community. It had a decent sized one for what it was, but it never really got the numbers that were really necessary to sustain it for as long as this thing has been in development. I mean seriously, the alpha version was released to the public in 2005 and they just released the 2.1 update in March of this year, 2016. It's pretty impressive to see how long the team has been working on this thing, and yet at the same time it's just sad to think of how mediocre it is. 
it's not the worst game ever. You can certainly get something out of it if arena shooters are your thing, and it is freeware, so there's really not much reason not to give it a try if it looks up your alley, but I really can't recommend it. There are quite simply better options out there, including Quake Live, even though Quake Live stopped being free to play quite some time ago and is now a 10 buck game. But here's the thing, even with a price tag, Quake Live has a player base, and that player base allows you to actually enjoy the game for what it's really best at, which is being a multiplayer arena shooter. You really can't say the same about Warso anymore. I have to say that I've played this thing in many different versions over the years, and it's really never managed to improve the core problems that exist with it, which is probably why it's pretty much dead right now. Ultimately, I give this a 2.5 out of 5. Again, there's just better options out there. If you want to give it a try, I will have links in the description box where you can pick it up and give it a try if you're interested. But again, I really can't recommend it. Thanks for watching.